get attacked. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Nerds of Legend. Uh, ignore the spousal abuse that just happened, but uh, we're just going to get started here. Thank you. Um, so, uh, today we're going to be talking about the book You Are You Evil Woman? The Portrait of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. The uh, one, the only. Uh, and then after, and then beyond that, next week we will be Joel and I, and maybe Missy, will be discussing some f good old fashioned, me uh, North American Creepy cryptids, stuff. creepy stuff because spooky Halloween. Um, also, uh, we're going to be taking a couple weeks off from the D and D uh, podcast because someone is going to Europe and going to be banging a bunch of Dutch bitches. Um. <laughs> I, 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 I was going to go to Warhammer World, but also that. <laughs> I'm glad that you recognize that is that is actually a mutually exclusive no, thing. No, if you get laid at Warhammer World, I want. <laughs> I, I want all of the details. <laughs> you put enough uh, Bugman's Ale on anybody and they'll say yes, I guess. If you if that comes in a can, you better be bringing that shit back to me because I would need to taste it. Um, Did he, I spaced out. Did he just say if Dutch bitches come in a can, he needs it? Bro. No, no, no. The no. Bugman, Bugman's right. Ale, which is a... Uh, or the main G the flagship GW store exclusive beer that is served at the store because why not because it's the UK. I don't want anything that tastes like 40k. Warhammer Fantasy. Joseph Buckman is a dwarf. Okay, yeah. no, I'd, I'd be down for that. I don't <laughs> yeah. want to taste like motor oil and my plutonium. Yeah, you know, just, uh, in increasing my chances of. Uh, getting hooked in Europe by talking about Warhammer. So Yeah. Yeah, that if that doesn't drop panties across the pond, nothing will. Nothing so will. <laughs> with those announcements out of the way, we're probably gonna be coming back late October on Thursdays with our uh, your general D and D stuff. But uh me and Joel are gonna be starting doing some cryptid stuff and whatnot. So you're in for some fun times. Um, yeah, there will also be a baby at some point. Yeah, Will's going to have a baby. Oh, yeah. That's also why we're kind of assuming Another we're just going to take it a little, a little slow the next few weeks. Yeah. Um, so, with that, Joel, I believe that this was your chosen book. So, tell us about the portrait of Dorian Gray. It sucked. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <clears throat> end scene. End scene. Yeah, and, and it's a very quick synopsis on this one. Uh, it is a story about a very attractive young man who foppish. Never, you would some would say he was posh. Don't you say? I said foppish. All of them were foppish. He was one limp handkerchief after another in this story, but. He made a way. Everybody was talking about how the only thing that matters is being young and beautiful forever. And he made a fervent wish when somebody, when the artist painted his picture, that the paint, portrait should age and not him. And then in the he next, would sell his soul. he would sell his soul in a Faustian arrangement of to never to, age again, never age and or suffer any negative side effects of his behavior and, and then, then proceeds to go on forward a... for 20 some years he became an absolutely hedonistic piece of shit and at the end of the book yeah he goes on like a 25 year long bender <laughs> yeah just that's it yeah. it's really it, if you want more anything more interesting about Dorian Gray watch the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen <laughs> that's Honestly, the the, I feel Dorian like Gray. I feel like the movie was more interesting made than the book the the movie made it so much better and I'm talking League of Extraordinary Gentlemen not not no like the the, the 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 book the, the the movie the portrait of Dorian Gray I feel like was more compelling I'm gonna watch it, but I, I did. Well, I think you're just your expectations are like how it's been like. Uh, Do you get the synopsis and how it's like played up? It's like it's like 
I don't know if has everyone here watched the the mo- the the movie Deliverance. Yes. Maybe. Yeah. So like, there's a lot of there's a lot of sh- stuff that happens in that movie, uh, but like when someone gives you the plot synopsis of that, it sounds like it's gonna be a badass like action film, and then it turns into just like a weird thing where like some guy gets like. Uh, butt fucked and told to squeal like a pig, and then that was uh, the whole movie. They they get caught by hillbillies while they're we on know like the story. A, yeah, but like when you get told the story, it sounds like it's gonna be more badass than it is because it sounds like they're like gonna fight their way out of the this fucking Appalachian hellhole. But then it just turns out like the guys that they end up like putting their, like, vengeance upon oh, didn't even have anything to do with the guys that they ended up, like, that they got assaulted by. So it was just, like, these, these, these like, uh, suburban white guys come out of the Appalachian Mounty, uh, Mountains after being uh, assaulted uh, and murdering people, and then they just agree to just, like, go on with their lives like nothing happened. That's kind of what Dorian Gray felt like because you you hear all these like this sort of like oh this guy he finds out he's got eternal youth and will never be touched by his own uh, decisions and uh, so it's like oh like as as no matter what he does he's always going to be beautiful and uh, never be affected but then. Uh, so like us in our modern brain are like this is going to be very like oh nitty gritty and like it's going to have a bunch of like weird scenes and then it's like the only like the like the craziest thing that happens in the entire book is he kills a guy everything else is just like suggested but you're coming at it from like a very modern that's i i fully agree with that yeah like you know like you're coming at it from you know, the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Right. Or, you know, right. some of the more modern interpretations. I'm fully... At the time, right. like, in Victorian England, this was a very scandalous book, right? Mm-hmm. So it did push a lot, a lot of boundaries. Not not what, like, not a small part of it is that eventually he does, like... Kill himself. Get arrested for being, um, you know, gay. And yeah. so you, you see in this a lot of that sort of like no. homoerotic undertones that right you know, that beauty that adoration that sort of captured it was very his, thick yeah like what's beauty and so now you have this thing that's underpinning everything right, right. This forbidden love this forbidden you know association right and then it's it's piled that on starts it all yes yeah. And it's piled on overly hedonistic behavior for that time. Right. Right. So he is, he becomes, he comes, he starts as a gentleman who is like someone who every, like single ladies would want to marry. Right. Yeah. He has status. He's Brad Pitt. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and so then like, you know, he's, he's there and then he devolves into this thing. And so not only it's like a multi layered thing because yeah. it's also, it's, it has those tones. It has, you know, the uh, satire on your commentary on the obsession with like beauty, right? And how mm-hmm. he is so beautiful, but also everything is yeah. pain, right? And so, also like propriety and all that stuff. Yes. Like, yeah. Yeah. So, oh, you know, you, have, you, you, Go ahead. you come at it from, if you come at it from now, it is boring. Oh, I get that. I read yeah. it. It was fine, right? Yeah. Like, I was in the thick... Well, I read it th- again, but, like, I was in the thick of, like, you know, grad, like grad school, it was just another book by another person from a time that was, very like, very self-indulgent, very, like, yeah. you know, like, on there's a lot of, like, ennui in it, where it's yeah. like, oh, I'm so rich and, and beautiful, and I can't find enjoyment in anything you know so you it, de- it depends famous vanderpump yeah this <laughs> was interesting about that time period is it's simultaneously like super self-indulgent uh but also like puritanical almost you know what i mean well, like so it's it is self-indulgent but in not in public right right so, the, yeah. so he talked about a lot of things that were being done right mm-hmm. the opium dens 
the prostitution, like all of that. Like, yeah, every every like highfalutin man has a mistress, sort of thing, and every miss more. and every wife has the, every like high ranking wife has a mistress or like a whatever yeah, the, the male counterpart what, is. the male counterpart of mistress, whatever yeah, it is. Lover. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, so like, you know, all of those things happened, not mm -hmm. not with everyone, but a lot of people did. Yeah. But it wasn't if, you know, you were talked to, if, if it was, you know, it was a man being a bastard, you were born on the wrong side of the blanket, like there were euphemisms, but it was a, a coming of age, right? Yeah. It wasn't celebrating, it wasn't glorifying all of that in the ways that this book really did. Mm -hmm. it, so, you know, it was, it might be boring now, um, but at the time it was, it was quite scandalous. Yeah. And, and for me, like the, I probably, I think the probably like the reason it was like boring for me in this instance was I think I've read this book like two or three times before. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I was just like, ah, oh, fuck, I got to do this again, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, because it's like one that's glorified in school, right? It's right. easy to read. It's something that's like a little bit more, you know, risque, like yeah. wise, you know, there's more things that you could get into. Plus it's creepy, right? Yeah. It's the idea, the premise of it is really cool, right? Like you sell your soul so you never age. And then, but you can see the aging of the portrait, right? You can see yeah. your soul leaving. Being tarnished, yeah. You. Like, and so it's it's really cool. And you can see why, in yeah. theory, it would have persisted where some of the other stories maybe didn't. Yeah. See, this, I read something when, about this, um, that in this time, and this is, I'm asking directly to you, because you studied this, but this was also like a very popular type of trope like the faustian arrangements yeah. like a and and like what is it henry i can't remember his name i'm it, but um no Thoreau. watts or the, the guy the main protagonist of the story not dorian the other guy oh yeah lord henry lord henry yeah he <laughs> like, he existed solely to be like the bad influence. Oh yeah. Like he never had a good piece of advice. Everything he said was confusing and beguiling, and he very much kind of was a he little was bit hedonism like, like, bot from Futurama. Kind of like hedonism bot, yeah. Like to not me, kind of. He would say completely these nonsensical things. Yeah. Without ever actually saying anything. Saying anything. And then when someone like challenges on it, it's like, oh, why ever would you think I said that, sir? Yeah. So like, I did not. That is not what I meant. But like, that's it, right? Be yeah. But because you don't talk, like yeah. you hint, you you you're not yeah. direct, right? Yeah. So Victorian. This is what late 1890s, right? You know, mm. you're coming. You know, like it's the the age. Look at Brendan's glitching. Yeah, Brendan's glitching. Um, he looks fine to me. Oh, he's glitching on ours. Uh oh. I'll fix your can shit, Brant you Havers. Oh. Uh oh. Right I, have that, I, I have that effect on people. Yeah. <laughs> no, we just turned it off. Yeah. He was sitting there for like a, just, a minute being like, <laughs> twitching. <laughs> oh, jeez. He's like just holding his microphone and like just. I was just. Going We're no strangers to love. Yeah. yeah. Well, so like the, there was an obsession with death, right? Like, yeah. There's a yeah. reason we don't have a ton of mummies, and it was because the Victorians ate them. Yeah. Um, you know, like it's so, so fucking weird. Like I, that, you covered that <laughs> Egyptology. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, like so, like it's they have this obsession with death, with supernatural. The t the time that like you know the Christmas Carol, like mm -hmm. the the British. I mean, he's Irish, but like English literature, if you want to talk about it as a whole, right? Like you know, like they tell ghost stories around Christmas time, right? So there is like this infused moment and this is coming out of, you know, Frankenstein had, um, you know, been published, Dracula. This is one of those yeah. big kind of three that yeah. define the horror genre, the supernatural, the obsession with, you know, the other, yeah. the otherworldly. This was one of them. And so it is it is a really defining moment of gothic literature, of supernatural, like all of that stuff, even if it is, you know, 
not my favorite. And I will say I am passionately defending this and I don't really care for it. Like, so, like, but I can still appreciate it. I don't, I, I don't think any of us are, like, poo-pooing it. I am. It sucked out loud. It's terrible. I mean, it was a, it was, like, I, I, I'm able to, like, agree that it's a product of its time sort of thing. It's just like. Oh, absolutely. I yeah. just. The, the self-indulgence. And the, 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 sorry, go ahead. The, the, the historical context is he published this in. in in ma you know a magazine or in, mm -hmm. in a paper yeah it was episodic um, episodic which i mean everyone at the time was doing for a buck if you uh if you ever wonder why dickens is so long it's because he he was getting paid by the word and it shows you know mm -hmm. um but yeah the first time i read this i was like 15 and i yeah. was actually laboring through the vernacular yeah as soon as soon as you come back to this book with the idea that the desires that he's feeling are forbidden and the ways he wants to spend his money and use his influence are forbidden then you recognize no wonder he's so tortured right now yeah it comes from a place of privilege oh i have all this money and in this house and this position but imagine if you had a scrooge mcduck level of money and you had to spend it on fidget spinners right you, you had to spend it on something ridiculous and you couldn't love the way you wanted to love and you, you know you couldn't do the things you wanted right. to do um from that perspective and if you think about it good luck finding any other lgbt fiction for the next like 60 years right mm -hmm. so from that position it has a massive historical context to it i will say my favorite oscar wilde is his plays i highly recommend you read his plays because they are amazing um that said this idea of Dorian Gray has persisted throughout our fiction, uh, mm -hmm. as, as, as Missy said. Yeah, the Faustian bargain. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Bram, Bram Stoker lit, lit a fire of his own, but um, Oscar Wilde really brought this idea of talking to Mephistopheles and, and brought it through the Victorian age. What's interesting about this one is like a lot of the, you know, Faustian bargain sort of books is like, there's actually, you know, like a sort of conversation with the devil. Yeah. And this one, it's just like, you don't even realize the implications of that conversation until like near the end, an hour, like, yeah, like three chapters later, when all of a sudden he realizes that like he he wronged his lover and his portrait changed you know like uh, these other like you know like ghost i mean like maybe i'm going too modern but ghost writer like he he immediately knows the bargain he made because he turns into the ghost writer you know yeah, <laughs> but yeah. like um like he's we like flaming skull shit but like yeah. like with this one it's like he he makes a, like a like an idle wish after his portrait gets taken and there's no there's idle. no there's I no 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 but not. like i'm saying this there's no like rush of wind there's no like ha ha oh no no you like, know like there's no like there's no granted. there's no there, mephistopheles does not show up and fucking be like your wish is granted like he realizes it later like there's no yeah but you see like but that like becomes like common later, you know. Yeah, like you see that he no longer cares, right? Like, yeah, you no, know, he loses that. He, like, he theatrically cares though. Like yeah. he, he's very big on the over the top. I think that's what put me out. Where like every time he would do something, he would very publicly chastise himself or like very, like loudly be like. Yeah, that was like the annoying thing. It was like. And, and then he would sneak off seven seconds later and do some worse. Yeah, it wasn't real. He was just trying to like. He was trying to give the the presentation of being the gentleman. But mm -hmm. you, but you become obs he becomes obsessed with the portrait, right? Or the idea yeah. of the portrait, and that nothing he does is going to Matters. make it stop decaying, right? Yeah. Be and so he comes to that realization that he's like he can't do the things just for show. He yeah. can't do what he wants, but he can't feel the the repentance the remorse that he really wanted now should <laughs> sybil have lived would he and he went back to her and he married her and did that would he, that have reversed it? yeah that's a, that was an interesting point with that uh yeah. lord henry made it was what? like it's like well 
Um, it wouldn't would not have mattered. You would have withered and you would have grown to hate her, and then she would have hated you. Like, but there was another part where I I firmly believe like that he that Henry Wotan was kind of the devil character because yes. everything well like when she died, he's not like. Oh my God! How sad is this? He's like, man, you're the luckiest dude alive. I can't believe she killed herself. Like that saves you a lot. Yeah. Well, his first thing is he's like, like, he's like, what the fuck? Like, his was, his his was, basic approach was, was like, was Dorian? How his basic approach was like, don't do anything until I talk to you. And then he shows up. He's like, how much damage control do I need to do? Yeah. Do I do I need like how many judges do I need to bribe? You know what I mean? Like, like yeah. you can tell, like, he Lord Henry shows up. He's like, because, like, Lord Henry does not, like, go out before 11 a.m. Right. And he shows up at breakfast. Yeah. And he goes, he has that. He goes, Dorian. He basically, he shows up and goes, Dorian, do you need an alibi? Yeah. <laughs> Which again, very devil like. Like keep yeah. doing your keep like doing your it's like it's like I don't need to know, but like well, I need I, to know. I, yeah. I know lots of bros, not like that's like, that's holy like do I need to he's, he's, like he goes, Do I he's basically going, Do I need to bury a body? Yeah. Well and but then he calls um the scientist, right? Alan right. or whatever, like No, but know, that's like, that's you know? Dorian. But I'm i I'm talking about Lord Henry. Like when yeah. Sybil dies, uh Lord Henry shows up at breakfast time. When he says, when he's like said earlier in the book that he doesn't get up before nine ever, yeah. <laughs> and he shows up at like early morning breakfast and goes, Dorian, uh, I need to talk to you. Have you read my note yet? And Dorian's like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. And he's like, because he had, he had again in one of his like fake displays of like, I'm not talking to Lord Henry ever again. Yeah, and then put his note to this. But side. Lord Henry shows up and goes. Do you need an alibi? Yeah. yeah. He's like, do you need a lawyer? But when Dorian does need, like, the alibi or does need help, he doesn't call on him, right? Right. Like, he calls on that, he calls on Alan, he calls yeah. on the guy who, like, has the knowledge. You know, so, to... That's another funny thing. It's like the one time is like, what if I told you I killed Basil? And Lord Henry's just like, ha, yeah, right. <laughs> like, doesn't believe him. Yeah, because he was too pretty to do evil. Mm -hmm. That was I, the. I got uh, I got Patrick Bateman vibes from that moment where. It, oh yeah, it was totally like, American Psycho. He's like, like yeah, I kill, I kill those people, and they're like, oh no, it, no, you can do that. that. That was so and so. He was on vacation. No, what are you talking about? And and he's like, no, I did it, and he's confessing, and they don't believe him. And it, yeah, it's, it's a very similar situation where. You have so many, so so many worldly possessions, so much position, so much power and privilege, mm. um, and just just trying to feel, just trying to live at, at at the expense of others to to have a presence and and you know leave a mark. It's your pick. That's nothing. I wouldn't be surprised if American Psycho took inspiration from Dorian Gray. There's a lot of inspiration from the story. Yeah. All right. So Mephistopheles. You can ask it is, it is the demon yeah. in, in you know, the Faustian tale. Mephisto mm -hmm. is the incarnation of the devil in Marvel Comics. Mephisto strikes a deal with... Uh, literally Victor. whoever's willing. <laughs> well, yes, but specifically Victor Von Doom's mom. Mm -hmm. And strikes a deal that he will prosper and be intelligent and do very well. And what does Victor do with, with his genius mind? He, based Fair on the... Thanos' spine out when he gets... Godlike powers. In Jonathan, one of his in, many iterations. In Jonathan Hickman's run of Secret Wars, that does happen. But yes, when he becomes in, God, the yes. he becomes the he tries to become he the can. Sorcerer Supreme, so he can go back to hell and bring his mom back. Is what happens. <laughs> yes, yes, triumphant <laughs> torment. Read it. But um, based on the interpretation, he either scars his own face from his hubris, trying to create a device to to pull his mother out of hell in his dorm room in college. Or he puts on a face mask when it, uh, you know, the steel is so hot it burns him because he doesn't care. So and then blames everybody for being and, disfigured, and, and that yeah. starts a lot of his nonsense. Yeah. Right. 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 So, so um, lack of responsibility, lack, uh, lack of, uh, lack of remorse, lack of temperance, um, this chip on the shoulder. 
so much influence can be drawn from this story. That's what I saw when, mm. when I read it. There, there is a fair amount of it, and you can see it as it being like a baseline to a lot of modern stories. But yeah, I still the way that they talked in circles, and I know it was probably just beyond my you know reading level. That was just like prose for the time. It yeah, and I just can't get with it. Like every time Lord Henry opened his mouth, it was like. He's just going to talk in certain, and it just reminds me of, like... Honestly, the, for me, it was whenever... Club being for, like, yeah, it's quite right. <laughs> for me, it was whenever Basil showed up. I was like, oh, boy, here we go. I get to listen to this guy Basil whine for an hour. Yeah. Basil was whiny and preachy. Lord Henry was like, as long as you're pretty, it doesn't matter. And Dorian just seemed like to go with whatever wind happened to be blowing in the direction. Basil yeah. comes in, and he's repentant and sad. Henry comes in and he's like, "I like doing everything." So honestly, I didn't mind when I didn't mind when Lord Henry was waxing poetic. I got annoyed when Dorian was like, "Oh no, uh, these guys that are like fifteen years older than me, I know better than all of you." <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like I know true love better than you, Lord Henry. Dorian. Sounds like the most insufferable rich kid. Oh, yeah. That, like, drives through the trailer park in his new Maserati and then asks people if they want to touch it, but they can't come near him. Right. Like, just that piece of shit. Do you have changed for a hundred? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. It's just, like, uh, it was interesting, though, how uh, there's a certain point in the book where it turned from, like, sort of a morality play into a thriller mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. when all of a sudden he just lost his shit for the last when he went to the opium like the first time like they showed like the aunt like oscar wilde showed like dorian basically like sinning on screen it was like when he's like fuck it and went to an opium den and then like his like moment of just like weakness after after killing Basil is the point where um, S Sybil, Van uh, Sybil Vance's brother shows up, happens to show up and is like, you, you killed her. And then it's like sort of this like thing of his like past uh, coming back to haunt him of his, that him was, like. That actually, I did get very engaged in that part because yeah. like all of a sudden all. The, the entire the, all the action the happened game. in like the last hour of the book. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, uh, so like he, he gets confronted by like a past flame from eighteen years ago, uh, which leads him to be get caught by Sybil Vance's brother, who has been like hunting for him for fifteen years, um, and then and then he tricks the brother and gets away. And all I mean, like, you know what I do find funny though is he played off look at how pretty I am and how young I am it's impossible I can do that like everybody in high society thought Dorian was the most wonderful thing ever yeah they're mm -hmm. like look at how he well in the beginning but then like there when so well, when he, Basil comes he's like listen like your name is tarnished like I'm hearing all of these things mm -hmm. You can't like what has happened. What's going on? But is Basil know? high society, or was he just a pig? yes? No, he is. Yeah, okay. and never mind. He because yeah, he was like, talking about all these clubs he goes to and hears the people like talking shit about Dorian. Mm -hmm. Oh, because yeah, it's like it's like the people in the brothel are like, no, that man's evil incarnate. But yeah, because that's the by that point in time, Dorian has ruined his name so much that the only place he can go and not be like, not but so much judged, right? But the th the point of it was he went back to one of his like old haunts, like he was c more careful before, and finally he was like fuck it and just like went to one of his like places he'd been to before, and then it's like, oh Prince Charming going off and uh, you're just going to ignore me now, um, like that sort of thing. Um, yeah, that's uh. Like I said, it's interesting because I think the the movie sort of makes the 
sort of like action and timeline make more sense. Like, mm-hmm. I think the movie, if I remember, like has uh, it, it like expands the timeline out more and has like Dorian basically like disappear for like 10 years at a time and then come back later and be like like posing as like the like a like a son or grandson or whatever as opposed to just like a full-on like um just like dorian existing for 25 years un- completely like looking like a 19 year old kid that's the uh, thing is that it's it's less it's more believable that right. way. Right. Yeah. Right. Like you see the like the pacing, like you say, is is a little bit better because you can see it, right? right. You can see everyone age around right. him. Right now you can like people are like, Oh, I'm not like it can't be me, I'm too young. Look at this or you know, like what's your secret or yeah, you it, know, all yeah. of that. But, like, I, I if I remember right in the in the movie, like not like in the Dorian Gray movie, uh, he goes back and hangs out with Henry and was like, "Oh, I'm Dorian's grandson." And then he does like e- either it's either like a mannerism thing, or like a like a secret that Dor like nobody but Dorian would have known. And Lord Henry's like, "Wait a second. <laughs> it's like you're Dorian, <laughs> and it like you know sort of it's almost like. Like Oscar, like Oscar Wilde's book is like a very interesting product of its time and sort of like a morality play. But I feel like, re, like reproductions of it have had like a more interesting thing as more uh, as a sort of like san- fantasy science fiction sort of like ideal, like like going with the trope of the ageless man that comes back and like no like people start recognizing him as someone who hasn't aged you know like this per like the person out of time so to sort of so to speak Mm -hmm. and like and that's what dorian gray has become more now than i think what oscar wilde was probably trying to portray like it's become like a very important uh, trope in fantasy and sci-fi, like the man out of time. But um, he would fucking love. He would love it. You, yeah. <laughs> you don't like. I, oh no, I was. I wasn't saying he wasn't. I was just like. I feel like th- that wasn't the point he was trying to make with the book. But I think I. I also agree with you. I was like, I think he would love like where, like the book. Like, when you think of the portrait of Dorian Gray, like, I feel like a lot of people, like, my, like, my age or whatever think of, like, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen of this guy that, like, just made a devil's bargain and became immortal and, like, chose and, like, and didn't choose the good path. He chose the, he chose to be chaotic evil, you know? Yeah, instead it's a story about a guy that, Got really sad that he's going to get gray hair and decides to do opium about it. Right. Yeah. It's um, it's strange to think about because like uh, uh, Robert E. Howard, who wrote the, the Conan, the mm-hmm. barbarian stories, he was so paranoid, not paranoid, I guess fearful about aging. Um, he took his own life when he was 30 years old. And it's crazy to think that in a time without television or distractions or, or, or flossing or, or, you know, or what have you. Um, <laughs> flossing? <laughs> you know, just, just social media distractions and, 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 and the latest trends and all that. Um, that's when you're stuck with your own devices and your own thoughts. And, you know, I mean, yeah. Mozart, Mozart, Mozart had done more 30 than most will do in their entire life lives. And to have that sort of... Um, melancholy about where you are in life they, they didn't live as long as we did so perhaps these thoughts came you know more quickly i mean I like how brendan's like without tv you're just gonna do opium and whores all day that's that's not what i said <laughs> Wait, he's going to answer to him what do you like what do you think? Oh, he's gonna do opium and whores all day his yeah. <laughs> So anyways, I'm going to Amsterdam for no apparent reason. <laughs> for opium and whores. <laughs> this is really lame. Warhammer whores. <laughs> this is really lame, but I want to send, I want to send, uh, you know, Tom Ben, I want to send my buddy a picture of me uh, with a Royale with cheese. 
Yeah. <laughs> Better. <laughs> you know, you know, where is it? Just. What's up? No. If you know, you know. It doesn't have anything to do with Horan. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's a reference. If you know, you know. It's a movie reference. Nope. It's fine. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> look at look at all of us. Just, no. just, just completely no. sucked all the joy out of the room. No, I. Uh, <laughs> I'm feeling bloody joy. I, I so so what was interesting to me is like I've like I said I've I th I think I've. I've read or listened to this book at least two to three different times before this, and uh, maybe it's my own naivete, but, like, until, Brendan, you mentioned, like, the, like, background of the novel of, like, what Oscar Wilde was trying to express, like, I didn't pick up on, like... And the bug all of the, that that uh, Missy mentioned as well. All of the 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 undertones of like the like struggling with homosexuality or whatever stuff. Yep. And I was like, when I like was listening to it with like knowing that, I was like, holy shit! <laughs> yeah, I'm dumber to post with this kind of stuff. right. Like, I'm telling you, reading this book, you could just feel with that lens. With that lens, it, I was like, "Holy it shit!" Genius. It was actually entered in as evidence in its trial. Right? Yeah, like, it is the know, gayest like, so written not, book like, I've ever like. He wore, like, by the way, he wore purple velvet to that trial. Nice, but yeah, I was like, I was listening to it, and I was like, "Holy shit!" Uh, yeah, like, he Lord Henry like is gayer that, like, is, like, basically ought to be, like, wearing rainbow colors constantly. <laughs> like, <laughs> he basically admits to, like, yeah, my, he, he basically, in the first chapter, tells Basil that his wife is a beard. <laughs> like, and I had never noticed it before. Like, when, um, and I was just like. It's like that's not a big deal, but like it was just like interesting because like noticing this like this like on a on a reread for the first time was was interesting. <laughs> well, like I mean, if you, again, like homosexuality was illegal through right in England through one of the wars, right? Yeah. The guy who broke the code, yeah. um, I think in World War One was it yeah. or was that two? Um, whatever they killed. I'll them. fully admit to not knowing the history of that stuff. Yeah. So, so I mean, it was illegal. It, it was. Yeah. It was not like, and you could be put to death even within the like eight, uh, 20th century, right? Right. So you know, There's it's, countries now that do that. Yeah. Well, but in yeah, like, I know, I know, this, right? So, um, it th this isn't the first book to have this kind of bromance like undertones it's not the last one it's right. you know it's mm -hmm. it's a very yeah you know like it it helped people feel seen even yeah. without being seen right right kind of like you said if you know you know right like right. You, know, so the, you know he was writing for um, you know himself. He right? who's writing a morality play, and at the same time, like he like at the he was sort of like writing a sort of thing of pointing out the the, the prevalence of homosexuality at the time, while also sort of like to hide it, hiding it behind a morality play. Yeah. Like funny because if you like if you go further back in time in some popular literature like they were all like people were bastards or like you know yeah. I mean like the main characters were well it, it's even offspring of not you know not they were born on the wrong side of the blanket right like they were bastards in the le in the legal term of it or right. you know like the, they followed um, reformed prostitutes like but at the end like the victorian undertone was was that there would be a consequence right he has the consequence at the end but not because he was caught like not because justice was served because he was mad right like you know if you go yeah. back to like tessa the dubervilles like you know she has like she had sex outside of marriage and and then she dies on this you know like mm -hmm. You know, on Stonehenge or whatever it's like, right? Like, so there's this this overly 
moral tone to Victorian literature in mm-hmm. some ways, in some subsections, that makes the hedonistic things, the bad, the the sins that they make are okay because they're punished for them. Like, and you don't get that here. You get the glorification, and yeah. then it's like, meh. And the, and the and the comeuppance is very very brief. Yeah. Because you almost think he's going to get away with it at the end. Like, oh, yeah. The only way I'm just going to point out it, that, it, like, it, even though, like, Missy, this isn't one of her favorite... Like, we, we picked a Victorian novel, and uh, it's not one of her favorites, but yet we still got the Victorian... We, we got the English major to come out this this book. <laughs> I like it when she talks about this stuff. Though. I know, I love it. <laughs> she loves it, so... That's why we started the book club. <laughs> well, so it, it, I think next time is my pick, and I, I don't know what it... Like, how are you guys feeling? So, I had an idea I for a book. Reading. It's not my pick, but uh, I what? can it's save it till mine. It's Missy's pick. Yeah. But it's what? your pick. I had an idea for a book that I was reading through, but it's your pick. So, um, I can go with your, no, no, your we're pick. not. We're you, you like you, 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 Joel's picked your books more often than you've picked your books. Yeah. So. Right. Stop making me pander to you. So I could go back to dumb shit that I understand. So honestly, I was like, <clears throat> like, you don't even have to come, come at us with something that you think we'd enjoy and just pick a book and we'll read it. Well, so he's, Brennan's got an wanna, Brennan's got two eight hour flights he's gonna have to go through, so he's gonna have to read a book. <laughs> that's, that's why we like this is because it makes you read shit you haven't read. Before. Right. Because right. if not, I would just read R. A. Zelator until I died. Well, do we want to stick with like classic horror because it's October? Do, whatever you do we want to do like more modern y stories? Like Pick, do we want pick. to stick with Scribe? Does everyone have Audible credits? Like, where I've got some. At? I've got an Audible credit that I'm willing yeah, to burn. I, I scrounge the most dumpster methods to get these books, like <laughs> oh. like like you, YouTube recordings of Audible, or like Russian PDF websites. <laughs> it's just you know, the tattered books from a from a secondhand store next to the hot dog stand. Just you know, any the most unsavory. I'm gonna method. say like don't don't. Just do your worst, Melissa. Uh-huh. The most, no. the most, the most Missy book. Just, just. You did Gaskell Thraka, un- so. Unfiltered Missy. You made it through Gaskell Thraka, so. <laughs> you did your penance. If you picked a, if you picked a Cowboy Christmas, I'd read it. A Cowboy Christmas. I did think about picking a romance book that um, Ben would hate. The hell is a Cowboy Christmas? Uh, just, I'm, I'm not anti romance books. I don't know how it's become pages. that. That's Joel, become the it's, thing. It's 58 pages and they sell it at the airport. <laughs> I just thought it was some gen- generic thing that you were going to pick. It's no, what? no, it's, it's paperback smut, my guy. Yeah. I, I, I got it as a white elephant present and I had to read it. That's awesome. I'm telling you, in this group, on this topic, I am by far the dumbest. Like, <laughs> hand, me, uh, hand, me I, a hammer, my... hand me a hammer and an anvil and watch me burn myself. So, <laughs> Yeah, I could do a lot of stuff. But when it comes to, like, like my read, I like this because it pushes me out of my comfort zone. Because if not, it's swords and sorcery all day long. There's no sex. It's just magic and fighting. That's it. I'm telling you, I've, 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 I've read more. Review is like I've, I've read slash listened to more books in the last year than right. I probably have in the last. I had in the last ten. Yeah, nice. and I love it, even yeah. though some of them are hot garbage. And this one, I'm going to put, even though I do understand its significance and I yeah. do see a lot of parallels. This one, I'm going to put into the category of hot garbage. Like, it, yeah. I will not willingly read this again. Like, and I knew it was going to suck because I tried to push my way through it before, yeah. but I, I just, I couldn't get over the fact that like, everything was over the top dramatic. And, you know, even when he killed himself, he's like, I've had it with this painting. And he just starts flailing around and he cuts it and kills himself. He stabs it in the heart and kills kills himself. Yeah. Have you seen, um, I like the one where it was like Parks and Rec. Yes. Not okay. The not character enough. of Greg is what I imagine Dorian Gray was. Uh, just the over okay. the top that, okay. that 
the 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 gay character that threw fits constantly that was dorian gray by the end of it is he's just having these little meltdowns left and right and i'm like and everyone's like are you okay yeah. like even even lord henry's I, like I, um I leave me alone. even the constantly oh unperturbed God. lord henry's like um you okay bud <laughs> who's like yeah. normally does not give a shit ever he's like are you doing all right yeah like, even though in my mind i pictured uh lord woden like henry woden to look like vincent price <laughs> like for some reason in my head no not like, jowly like, enough mustache with the long not not jowly enough no no vincent price wasn't jowly no vincent no 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 i'm older. saying i'm saying vincent price is not jowly enough oh, for no, lord henry not. Like the thing you needed to get over is Missy explained to me once that personal hygiene sucked ass back then, and so they used a lot, a lot of like fragrances and perfumes. Well, yeah, because he things. mentioned like how he just had like uh musk, like musk incense on hand to like cover up the smell of uh, a dead body, <laughs> like... yeah. And so I imagined also these like. Pop just reeking. Yeah. Not to mention they, they prop up the the corpse like in the coffin and take pictures with it. Yeah. Mm. Why not? That's normal. <laughs> Why not? And then turn mummies into into wallpaper. And they eat them. And, and eat them at parties. And into boner pills. You forgot boner pills. Because nothing says hard dick like a four thousand year old dead guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we found the title to the episode. <laughs> Nothing says hard dick like a 4,000 year old. Write that down, Jill. <laughs> <laughs> I um, wish we had creative titles. I should, since I titled them, I really should do better. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. I, I, I imagine Dorian fretting about in this book, and then there's just like hundreds of dock workers in the same time period in the same environment being like, Love me football, love me brew, simple as like at the same time. <laughs> yeah, because because there's that whole that's there's that whole thing. It's like I've heard of you being spotted getting into brawls on on the docks. <laughs> yeah, and like, like times, you like, know, Dorian's just been like going down there getting drunk with the sailors and just like fucking getting I'm a, like. <laughs> I'm immortal, rich, and wealthy, and then there's all these guys just like. <laughs> All of this, they're 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 they're. Shut up and drink your pint, boy. <laughs> picture of what makes them happy yeah. is so intense because, you know, they're not that their world is small or anything, but it's it's like they have their job so they can have their family and they're like there's a, there a, is, there's a joy in their simplicity and and almost that, you know that's what it was. There is a there is a piece to simplicity. Yeah. yeah, you know, like I spent, like I, I love my factory people. Like I love working with them. They're just like, I just want to do my job and go home. Well, that was one of the most. They don't want to do any. That's and it's very, it's a matter of fact, simple life, and they like it. That was one interesting thing about one of the scenes was with Dorian when he figures out his like, his like immortality or his eternal youth, so to speak. Um, is he like the first thing he sends for is he like writes a letter to Lord Henry for some reading material for the for the evening, and he, and the 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 Lord Henry's response is to sell him send him a magazine and a and a and a book, and he just like spent the night spent the evening reading the book and then like. That was the interest. The other interesting thing was like, oh, I guess like they have dinner at nine o'clock at night on the rig. <laughs> like, <laughs> to me, that was like the, I'm up late. Like, 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 wait, what up? How are you doing? You know, yeah. just, like, it's like, what's up? Some... I think that's what it was. Like, it's yeah. like, like yeah. we're going out tonight. Yeah, yeah. Like, you're like, this is just life. Like, yeah, it's like it's like thinking about you, like just the letter U, and it's like sent you a playlist <laughs> yeah it's, like, it's exactly what this is and, and then lord henry is like like sitting there bellied up at the bar like waiting for him like it's like it's like not, it's not, it's not, like not, friday not, night uh, friday yeah, night not, waiting for him to show up <laughs> like the ellipses on messenger and, he, and he's it's got it's on red and he's waiting for a reply you know? yeah <laughs> it's so like that's totally like the same <laughs> like when uh um 
when his wife died and he was like, oh, no, she divorced no. him. Yeah. Yeah. But like, 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 you know, from his life and yeah. out and everything, the, the, the indifference. Right, that he's like, oh. oh, no. Anyway, it was just kind of. Yeah. Oh, no. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, you know, so, so the heterosexual relationship the uh the you know the devotions to other things other than hedonism uh not seeing uh, you know just seeing these individuals in a circle almost like his his cabal um you can see why he was entered as evidence right yeah it, it, yeah. Um, it almost reflects the the uh, struggle of a of a young professional mm. a young successful professional with do i follow my hedonistic urges because he had them um, do I try to live my truth because it wasn't accept- acceptable? And um, he nobody lived their truth back then. They hid it. Yeah, yeah. Because the, if they did live it, they would die. He, and he wasn't exactly clandestine about it either. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Oscar Wilde was like Liberace level gay. The the Cause even though we nobody knew that either. Figure yeah, that out. Elton the, John. Elton John. Yeah, 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 he owned it too. Very <gasps> Barry Manilow, no. Um, okay, I've decided to be kind to you guys. Um, animorphs? Um, and animorphs? Animorphs? <laughs> animorphs, that's what it is. I loved animorphs as a kid. The we're haunted mask, doing... Goosebumps issue one. Yes. Oh my god. Wow, well, would... this is where it shows I'm older than all of you because I never bothered with any of that stuff. Oh, you were. I had the board game, Joel. It's fine. You're also 11, so. Well, the Animorphs, Goosebumps, like the Fear Street. I started. I actually read a couple of those recently. That were fun. Um, no, I'm gonna do uh, like a not, another classic, but a little bit older. Um, and the Bible. <laughs> a little bit more recent, rather. Um, Agatha Christie, and then Ooh. there were none. So, oh, that's like you know, it's it's a little mystery. It's on scribe, oh. so um, that was please. the that, that was the book they made me read the summer before my freshman year in high school. Oh no, pre read it for freshman English. So Missy Agatha Christie's to me what Neil Gaiman is to you. Oh no. I'm a, Do you want me to change? No, no, no. I will read it again. Um, I'm a Raymond Chandler kind of guy. Okay. Like the long kiss goodnight and 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 rum punch and Thomas Pynchon and stuff like that. And, and I've, um, read, I've read Thomas Pynchon. Yeah, yeah. The dumbest one in this group. I'm like, no idea what you guys are talking about. What is yeah. Gravity's Rainbow? It's yeah, really yeah, 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 yeah. And, and 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 the way Agatha Christie writes, like. It's so arbitrary, the the truth and, and the lead of what really happened. There's no way for you to ascertain it until the hook happens, uh, especially for, for this book. I will not refer to it by its original title. And um, it's just sort of like, oh, oh, how was I supposed to know that that actually happened until after yeah. the fact? And that right. kind of thing. So it, it, as long as you don't think about it as a mystery and you just think about it as a narrative then it's a story but for me a mystery is experienced with the reader along with the protagonist yeah and um po- po- poirot is closer to that it's not as bad but um but hey we'll read it we'll talk about it all right so, like, i will not be partaking on the flight because i want to enjoy my time and not be angry <laughs> no 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 you know what it, it might be a, a <laughs> they're just he gets to Amsterdam just furious. <laughs> it might be. Talks his way into the red district. Agatha. Angrily buys a prostitute. <laughs> Give me your be. best blowjob now. <laughs> it might be. read a bullshit book. It might be a, a potent sleep aid on the flight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, other than that, uh, next week we're going to be doing some cryptids. Joel, do you have a hint as to which we'll be covering or um, because we did midwest crypt we did midwest cryptids already some, uh, some more popular popular cryptids we'll start with um 
Let's do let's do a mix of like the shadow people, the sh and uh, the beast of Bray Road. That's always a fun story. I feel like we did Beast of Bray Road already. You can never do the Beast of Bray Road too much. Oh, that's fine. Uh, or you find your own. I don't care. All right. Let's let's let let's switch it to just ghost stories. Local ghost story. My dog is obsessed right now. Yeah. As soon as I mentioned ghosts and cryptids, he's like. Rub, 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 rub. Well, he's the he's the bravest thing in the world as long as there's a pane of glass in a house between him and whatever's dangerous. Oh well, no! I thought he was it, gonna kill me when I came in that one time. It's October now, so the expl the explanation is dogs can see the dead. Oh no! Whoa. I'm okay with that nonsense. Joel's on the podcast, but he's been dead for twenty years. Whoa. Whoa. Um yeah. So we're gonna hit up some we're cryptids. Me, stories. me and Joel yeah. will uh cryptids and ghost stories. Uh me and Joel and maybe Melissa. And maybe. Puppy Dubby. And not me. And not You're not gonna Brendan. be neat, neck deep in prostitutes. <laughs> I can't I couldn't afford that. <laughs> yeah, you gotta think of Brendan it. Brendan doesn't pay. <laughs> <laughs> I will be having stroop waffle. Uh, and the rest the, the rest is up to whimsy. I didn't go I haven't been to Amsterdam. You haven't? Mm. I'll, 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 I'll have to, I'll have to pollute forget. the chat with pictures then. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jen, my, one of my friends did, and she got chased out of the red light district because you're not supposed to take pictures of the ladies in the in the windows. That is correct. Yeah. Just supposed to give them penis. Yeah. Jennifer didn't have penis. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> like I said, anyway. uh, next week we're going to be doing some cryptids and and or ghost stories. Uh, ghost stories start soft. Uh, we'll figure out the exact uh, framing of the subject matter between now and then. We have a book of uh, ghost stories from Naperville, so um, he's going to be doing some research. Oh. And uh, I haven't done research for one episode in any of this shit. This is all made up as I go. He's going to be doing some light I, reading. I couldn't tell. Well, yeah, we'll figure yeah. it out. <laughs> right. That's what we're going to do. Um, other than that, uh, the next book will be And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. Uh, and that's, that's and we'll be back probably by the end of the month with some more Dungeons & Dragons pro programming. In the meantime, our members are having some extra stuff going on, so we're going life to be event. skipping it. Life events. So we'll be skipping it for the next couple weeks. And we'll continue to let you know when we'll be coming back to the normal Dungeons and Dragons stuff. So. You can tell the energy went out of this one. All of us, you can tell, get up early in the morning. So we are done. <laughs> yeah. So thanks, everybody, for watching. And we'll see you again next week. <laughs>